on in our first week with 20th century, we are now moving into our next slide. This one is called the Memorial Sheet for Carl Lebanock. This is 1919 to 1920. This is woodcut, and the artist's name is Kathy Kolowitz. Uh, you can classify her under German Expressionism. Okay, so right off the bat when you're looking at this before I get into it, take a good look at this one. This should remind you of a particular scene we've seen a few times uh, when we were studying Christian art in the beginning. So I'm going to just leave it at that. And I want you to think of one that was in a particular chapel in a particular scene where we saw something very similar to this. And I'm going to ask you later on and see if you can identify it. Okay. Um, so just to talk a little bit about the artist uh, before we get into kind of like some context, we need to kind of know what's going on in the in this um, particular time, um, who she was, and then what she's supposed to be representing here. Okay. So she grew up, um, Kathy Kolowitz, she grew up in a family that embraced socialism and throughout her life she used prints. So, and basically the use of being, uh, the use of prints that we've studied before is the fact that the ideal medium for spreading political statements to be publicized, um, the tragic effect, um, effects of poverty and war on the working poor and especially mothers and children. That was kind of her specialty. So um, again, publicizing tragic um, effects of poverty um, on the war, on the working poor, and especially mothers and children. And you actually do see a mother and a child. If you can look at this for a minute, you can kind of point out where they are. Throughout most of her career, she used etching. However, um, but having been deeply affected by Goya's disasters of war etching, remember the one that was, and there's nothing that can be done, and it was a man, and there were actually a few men, and they were all on the um, stakes. And then the only thing that we could see as far as how they were dying was those rifles, but we couldn't even see the full rifles. We did see a few soldiers in the background off to the right side, but we saw all these like random lines that were indicating rifles that were on the right side, if you guys remember that one. Um, so she was really affected by Goya's work um, and lithographs, but for a few years after World War One, we're in this time period, but we're going to be talking about that for the next three slides. Um, she embraced the raw effect of woodblock printing that had cast off the subtlety and finesse of her earlier works in etching and lith 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 lithography. Um, Kathy Kolowitz felt that her protest against the horrors of war was best communicated in the rough edges and stark black and white woodblock prints um, could be afforded. Okay, um, It's during that period that she makes this woodcut. Context-wise, not to get too into it, uh, between the end of World War One on November in November 1918, um, an establishment of the Wimir Republic. Nine months later, Germany's government was led by a coalition of socialist groups, and during that time, the more radical um, this is what you just need to write down the Spartac Spart uh, Spartacus, and it's spelled S P A R T A C I S T S, um, who would become the the, Germanist, the German Communist Party attempted to incite a communist revolution in 1919. Um, the second group that I just want you to write down is the more moderate socialist government, or just that you can just note this, the more moderate socialist government sent the military to end this uprising. And unfortunately, during this particular event, 25 of the of the more radical group, the Spartacists, were killed, including their two leaders. Karl Lebanak is one of them, and, the, and I'm pretty sure you could probably assume which one he's representing, and Rosa Luxemburg, who were the ones that were shot to death. So, Kathy Kolowitz was not a communist and disagreed with the aim of ending capitalism through violent revolution, but she had seen Lebanak speak and admired his um, courage and charisma. She attended his funeral and was deeply impressed by the silence of the thousands who attended it. 
The family had asked Kathy Kolowitz to create a work in memory of him, and she agreed. So this is what she created. She began doing an etching and then a lithograph, but wasn't satisfied with either. And after seeing an exhibition of woodcuts by another German expressionist, um, Ernst Barlow, in 1920, she decided to use woodcut for this to achieve the simplicity of boldness of design appropriate to the subject matter. Um, through her mastery of expressive body language and gesture, the figures of the mourners, if you want to pay attention to them, and, and by means of the empathetic black and white contrast, a stylized of form and vertical horizontal oppositions, um, the mourners and the corpse, um, give a powerful and great give powerful and engraved lines um, that she can com uh, communicate a sense of grief and loss. Okay, so we should see some empathy when we're studying this particular piece. So um, this work had been described as a socialist pieta. We've heard that term before, pieta. It should make you think of the one, the Rodejan pieta, where we had, who do we have? We had Mary and Jesus. Okay, remember we had that one where it was the one where Jesus had just been crucified and Mary was holding on to Jesus and he looked very grotesque and not very pleasant looking, looked very sick and skinny and we talked about how we really didn't like that one in class. Um, it was made out of wood and that was also from Germany. Uh, because of its illusions of representation of mourners around the body of Christ. So who would we associate that being? this guy right here okay so this should earlier when i was asking you what is this going to remind you of a particular church um, hopefully you were thinking of giotto's lamentation from the arena chapel here like um, here we see Lebanon as christ as a christ figure um, and the martyr who died for his his cause um, the allusion to christian lamentation scenes would have been easily recognizable by the masses who were the artist's intended audiences um, so Kathy Colwood sold prints um, to help fund an exhibition of art by workers. Um, even though Kathy Kolowitz was not a communist, she realized many might think she was for having done this work. So anticipating this, she wrote in her diary, um, and this is quoted, as one artist, I have the right to distill the emotional content out of out of everything and anything, to let the content take effect on me um, and then to give outward expression to it. I also have the right to depict the workers, leave taking from Lebanox, indeed, the right to dedicate the work to the um, proletariat without identifying myself with Lebanox political views. The last thing, and then we're done, I need for you to kind of uh, make some um, annotations on this. I want you to divide this scene into three areas, okay? So I want you to first divide this top scene, and we're going to do this in thirds, okay? So notice where I'm putting my um, arrow. I want you to put a line right here, and then a line right above where we got our, our guy down below, okay? So we're going to talk about this in thirds. So in the top, okay, this is going to represent the thousands that were at the funeral, um, each face is individualized, but they are tightly packed into a very close space. This gives the impression of multitudes coming to pay their respects. And if you notice, ah, excuse me, sorry. Um, if you notice that there is a mother and a child, and the mother is having um, the baby be able to see um, common interests, uh, and again, that was something characteristic-wise Kathy Kolowitz was known for, okay? Uh, moving on to the middle section, okay? We don't see as many people being emphasized as we see in the background, and that's apparent. Um, it's almost empty, and again, it's trying to emphasize the crush of the mourners above and calling attention to the mourner bending over and touching the corpse, literally. Okay, so we got this main area where there's not too much going on, not many mourners as above. Okay, so then that leaves us down at the bottom with mainly being white, suggest suggesting the shroud over the body. This highlights the expressiveness of the gesture of the grieving mourner's um, hand on Lebanon. Okay. Um, and then just a f interesting note, when the Nazis came into power, Kathy Kolowitz refused to create Nazi propaganda, and as a result, she was labeled as a degenerate artist, and all of her works were removed from public view. 
and we actually have another artist that's going to be labeled as a degenerate artist. So um, this is going to conclude us for the memorial sheet of Carl Lebanon. Okay, over and out, Miss Howard.